Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, folks. How are you doing today? What we are about to go through is an exciting interview of someone who is on the path to financial freedom. They are about 40% of the way there. We will get into the numbers. But I just want you to know, when you interact with me on Instagram and whatnot, you will never know when I will invite you to be interviewed on this channel. That's exactly how this happened. Uh, so let's welcome John Santos to the show. How you doing, buddy? Hey, doing pretty good. How about yourself? I'm doing all well. Well, you never know, huh? You you see a post, it inspires you to respond, and then next thing you know, somebody's like, "Hey, you want to talk real estate?" Yes, exactly. I mean, once I saw your post about how bad you know wanting to be financially free, I was just like, you know what? We just made a recently great move. I, I gotta I gotta respond to this. So, uh, you know, I, I went ahead and responded right away. That's awesome. You just never know. Uh, I, I, and people, some people know this, if you follow me long enough, but it's me, right? I don't have a team, no virtual assistants. I'm the guy who looks at the comments. I'm the guy who deletes you if you're nasty. Um, yeah, it's just, it's just me. So I, I love this one rental at a time thing and I'm going to keep it going as long as I can. So thank you for participating. Awesome. Yeah. You know what you're, I enjoy following you. There, there's a lot of great content you're always sharing and, uh, it's a lot of fun on you. So thank you for all the stuff that you put out there. I appreciate it. Well, let's, uh, let's get people caught up on John and your story. Um, why don't we sort of talk about where you are today and then we'll go backwards to the beginning. So where, where are you sitting today on the path of financial freedom? All right. So as of right now, we currently have seven rentals, um, uh, and technically uh, eight doors. Okay. So we just found uh, tenants uh, for our most recent rental, which is actually our primary as of right now. Oh, nice. Uh, these moving in next month uh, after we move out at the end of this month. Uh, nice. So that's right now, uh, which equates to about uh, just over uh, 4,000 uh, a, a month in uh, cash flow. And uh, yeah, that's and and really the goal is to to get to ten thousand before we uh, officially decide to call it quits with our W two and, and and be financially free. That is awesome. So let's break that down a little bit. So let's let's give shout out to who's the we in this equation. It's not just John. That's correct. Yes, yeah, so I've got my my lovely wife uh, who we've uh, been married for just ten years now, as of January. Uh, so her and I, along with, uh, our three children, we've wow. got, uh, two twin girls, uh, who are three years old, uh, along with a one-year-old. Nice. Nice. So that's a big family, family of five, married 10 years, three kids. That is awesome. T are the twins? I just want to ask, are they identical or fraternal? Just curious. They're fraternal. Oh yeah. Cool. All right. That is cool. And, uh, where, where do you invest? Where are these, uh, eight doors? Okay, so when we first started off, uh, my wife and I, we both started off as accidental um, landlords. Uh, I bought my first house um, in 2008. Oh. Uh, my wife, her first house in 2009. Uh, so I bought in Fresno, California, and my wife bought in Visalia. And um, after we got engaged and we we're about to get married, we decided, hey, look, let's move in together. Mm -hmm. uh, so it went from me, you know, doing house hacking before I even knew what house hacking was. <laughs> yeah. uh, it was myself for a few months before I started renting out the other rooms to my friends. Um, and then when we decided to live together, um, I decided to move in with her, got the other room rented out. And that was our first rental uh, okay. was in Fresno. And then later on, we moved back to Fresno. Uh, and then decided to rent out her house in Visalia. And fast forward to today, um, we ended up buying a house together uh, in Clovis. And after buying our, which is actually the house we're living in today, um, we decided, hey, you know what, this, this whole, you know, owning, uh, you know, rental properties is really working out great. Uh, we weren't cash flowing a whole lot at the time, uh, roughly in 2015, but we saw the potential. And so it led me into doing some research, reading some books. And so um, as prices were going up in California, 
I started reading about investing out of state. Uh, so then we jumped into Indiana. Okay. And today we have three rentals in Indiana, along with a duplex in Memphis, Tennessee. Very cool. So, so in Indiana, in Memphis, I'm assuming you have property management, but I don't, I guess I shouldn't assume that. I assume you do though. No, we do. We yeah. even have uh, property management, even for our houses, our rentals here in okay. California. That was going to be my next question. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Very, very cool. Um, just, you know, rough and tough. What, what attracted you? It sounds like Indiana was first. Uh, what attracted you to Indiana? Yeah. So in, while I was studying real estate and trying to figure out, okay, what would be a great place to invest? Um, I started coming up with a list of criterias mm. um, and to, you know, just to briefly go over that, I basically came up with wanting to be near a state capital. Okay. Uh, also an area that has great schools. Okay. Um, also, at the time, at least, uh, medium home prices being less than 200000 Okay. Um, low crime rates um, and, and some other like minor uh, criteria, uh, but not key factors. Okay. Uh, but that was really the, the main thing for us was being close to a state capital uh, along with great schools because we knew that was going to draw constantly right families wanting to rent uh, the single family homes make and again so single family homes is, is also other than the duplex that's correct okay cool all right so let's um i always always like to know where you are so we can always go back so first and foremost uh obviously i was in the market in 08 09 in fresno uh, not by Celia, but close enough um mm -hmm. that was the market was rolling over would you call it rolling over yes. or would you call it the peak at that point it's probably rolling over right it was rolling over yeah 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 because I, I remember recall. i did i did i remember buying one or two that year because you never know right where they're going to go uh but they 0809 is i recall fresno they were down but it was five maybe ten percent um and then it got nasty i mean what what were you thinking because like by 2011 you know some of fresno was 50 percent off like do you remember that time right I do remember that time and going, you know, being there uh, during that time, I just remember having moments of thinking, oh my gosh, you know, I, I bought this house at this price and yeah. it's now depreciated. <laughs> it's, it's dropped in value, you know, quite a bit. Uh, and my wife and I, you know, having discussions, you know, should we sell or, or yeah. we strategic get, default, I bet was a conversation. Yeah, exactly. And so, um, and plus it didn't help having, you know, coworkers and friends who, who also own houses during that time. Um, they were selling and um, it, it just kind of gave you that impression, like, you know what, maybe we need to do the same. Mm -hmm. But in, we decided to, to hang on. And at that time, uh, we really weren't even cash flowing. Um, oh. in 08, yeah, in 08, um, at all the way up to probably 2011. Mm -hmm. uh, well, because they were our prim primary homes that got converted into a rental, um, I want to say I was actually contributing probably about 100 to 200 those first couple of years um, until eventually we were breaking even. Yeah. Now we're, we're cash flowing nicely with, with all of our rentals. Um, yeah, I, I just want to go back to that time frame. I'm going to guess just the fact that you held on probably meant that you had fixed rate 30 year debt when you bought, I'm just guessing. Yes, that's correct. Yeah, because what, what really happened to a lot of people is they got caught in those ugly teaser loans. And then once the debt reset and it went from 3% to seven or nine or 12 in some cases, they're like, not only am I upside down 50%, but I'm, you know, I have to throw in a thousand bucks a month. No thanks, right? So right. the fact that you held on meant you were really close. You probably had fixed rate debt. These, these were just all guesses I had. So. Kudos to you getting 30-year debt. Folks, if you're buying today, get 30-year debt. You can hold on uh, a lot easier than an adjustable rate mortgage. So pretty cool. Um, so, so you hold on, you get through it. The market turns around. By 2015, Fresno's coming back, right? It may not be, it probably wasn't to your purchase price back yet, but you were, rents were going up hand over fist, right? Yep, yep they were. 
Yeah. Uh, yeah. I think by that time we were at least cash flowing a couple hundred dollars by 2015. Uh, so that was really nice. to, yeah. to When you to finally get that. out of an alligator, it's lovely. <laughs> Yes, exactly. It was it was relieving to to get to that point because you know in the moment you know in the in the oh nine the two thousand ten yeah. it's like oh man how long do we do this but yeah. uh, eleven and twelve had to be rough because eleven was a rough year it was like it's going down I remember thinking they can't go any lower and they'd go lower it can't go and they go lower because I remember that first house <laughs> I I bought for one oh seven it goes all the way up to like. 270. I think at one point it was worth 300 after I sold it. So buy it for 100, worth 300, and then 150, 125, 100. And, and it eventually resells at 75. It's like, oh my God, it lost 70% of its value. Crazy. Oh my gosh. That's yeah. insane. Yeah, I hope I hope to never see that again. That was that was that was a perfect uh that was a perfect storm um uh, for, for defaults. So okay, so you get out of this, you start seeing real cash flow. You're like, hey, honey, some is good, more is better. When does the goal for 10 grand come about? And I just want to tell you, I think 10 grand is a lazy ass number, just so you know. So, <laughs> so you know what I think. I think your freedom number yeah. is, a, is a number, it's just so not 10 grand, but I, I appreciate the goal. Uh, so we'll get to that in a minute. Yeah. Let, let's talk about wh where did this vision yeah. come for financial freedom? Because I never really had that vision until very late. So kudos to you seeing it as a possibility. When did that first come into your, your conversation with you and your wife? Wow, uh, that's a great question. So it probably started off when we were looking to buy our current primary home. Okay. Um, and we were having the conversation of what do we do with our other two houses? The one by uh -huh. sell. Do we sell them or do we hold them um, and, you know, see what what it turns into down the road you know are they going to cash flow one day or is it going to continue to get better mm -hmm. and so and then the other thing too a, a lot of the motivation um, and vision came from my parents um they have a rental property uh that's, that's paid off and is cash flowing very nicely for them they're not getting much from social security they're actually getting more from this one rental uh, for their retirement, their retirement. And that right there was great to see, you know, because I, I would help a lot um, with managing that that home. Uh, and they were actually managing it themselves uh, for the longest time until we finally convinced them, mm -hmm. you've got to go with the property manager, it, it just relieves you from a lot of stress yeah. uh, and, and work as well. Um, so once we saw that, that right there told us, you know what, I think there's there is a great potential to replace our income if we have enough rentals that are all cash flowing mm -hmm. to replace our current income and which then could lead us to retiring early. Yeah, that's awesome. Yeah, kudos to you. I mean, I I was so focused on my day job and then just one rental at a time. I never really looked up to think about what it could be. It's it's so funny to admit now, but yeah, kudos to you. All right, so now um you know, have the, the one thing I did, because again, it's funny how our stories are somewhat similar, just off by a couple of decades. Um, we got to we got to eight doors, seven properties, eight doors. And that's when we really started to what we what I call now recycling capital. Um, I mean, have you looked I mean, have you ever gone back into those first two properties, the one in Fresno that was your, or yeah, yours and the one in Visalia that was hers and either a looked at doing rate and term refis to lower the payment or did you do any cash out refis to help fund acquisitions in Indiana or uh, Tennessee, I think, or Memphis? We did. Uh, the one thing we did end up doing with uh, both of those properties is we did end up refining, refinancing them, excuse me, okay. and just re-extending that term, basically starting over with another 30 year loan, okay. but a lower rate. Yeah. Uh, Along with, at the time, um, we had an MIP, which mm. was, gosh, I think one of them, we were paying over $200. Um, MIP being mortgage insurance. Correct, correct. Yeah. The, the mortgage insurance, uh, which the, with the refinance, we were able to get that way. I see. Exactly. And then also, you know, starting over with a new 30-year uh, loan with the loan itself being already paid down several years. Yeah. Uh, 
and starting that over, it also dropped our mortgage payment, which therefore increased our, our monthly cash flow today. Uh, so that was what we looked into. Um, you know, I wasn't really um, familiar or had a whole lot of knowledge with uh, cash out refis at the time. Sure. Um, though I, I did hear about it, but didn't really look into it. Um, but at the time, we, we felt pretty comfortable with the refinance. When, when did you do the refis? 19, 18, 20? So I would have to say the Fresno house, we refied 2010, 2011. Oh. And then we ended up refinancing um, the rest of our portfolio, not until last year, early this year. That makes sense. Okay. Yeah. Cause a rate and term yeah. refi is awesome, right? I mean, that just extends the term, especially when you get rid of mortgage insurance that just explodes your cash flow, right? If your payment was 1200 and now it's 900, well, where's the other 300 go in your pocket, right? It's, it's pretty, exactly. amazing. it's pretty amazing. So that's yeah. awesome. Um, so now that you look out into the future, right? Have you, uh, where do you sit now? So you got a little bit in California, a little bit in Indiana, uh, a property in Memphis, um, are you kind of opportunistic and you'll take the deal where it is, or you're like, nope, Memphis is where we're going to focus for the next couple of years. Where's your, where's your focus? Yeah. So moving forward right now, um, because we're moving, we, we bought a new primary home and in California to, or where uh, in California. Okay. Yes. Yeah. We're, we're actually trying to move closer to family. Hmm. Um, and so in the process of converting our current primary as a rental, uh, which we did find tenants last week. So that, that was uh, great nice. news there. Um, but as of right now, right now, the focus to getting to that 10,000 a month, uh, which was based on our current expenses and being able to live, uh, you know, for us, you know, at, at a comfortable level. Yeah, the life you want, live the life you want. Exactly. Yeah. My wife and I were really big into traveling, as you can see the, the map behind me. <laughs> I love it. So, um, uh, so right now the focus, because we're, we're doing this transition into our new home, uh, we're looking to pay off one of our mortgages because the, the thing that we were contemplating was, okay, do we want to continue and buy another cash flowing property, potentially two to $300 a month? Um, which we would need, I mean, what would be the math there? Um, you need something actually, like yeah. 20 more, if it's 300 bucks a month and you need six grand, that's 20, 20 properties. Okay. So another 20 homes, or if we were to pay off each loan, hmm. we could then increase our cash flow significantly just with one property alone. Oh yeah. So, I mean, yeah. If you have a mortgage, call it 1100. If you pay that debt off, that's 1100 that falls to the bottom line, right? Exactly. Yeah. Just minus a little bit for property taxes uh, set aside for that. But yeah, yeah exactly. That was the, the mindset. Okay. Hey, either expand the portfolio and get another 20 to 30, which is another potential several phone calls a year of, mm -hmm. you know, maintenance um, and requests from the tenants of certain items that they're, they're wanting. Yeah. Um, or or maintain what we have, which is pay off that debt, okay. uh, which which each loan paid off would then increase the cash flow an extra six to nine hundred dollars uh, a month right there alone. Okay, yeah, because everybody you know everybody has different rules of uh, rules of thumb in this environment, and I you know whatever is comfortable for the investor is awesome by me. So basically, you're like, hey, honey, yeah. we've we've got our portfolio, right? We've got our set of, you know, we got our greenhouses, if you will, to steal the monopoly analogy. And what you're going to do now is you're like, nope, we're going to pay them off. That's kind of the plan for the family, it sounds like. Yeah, just because of what we've got going on today with mm -hmm. the move uh, and, you know, getting the girls into daycare and eventually into Life's elementary busy. school. <laughs> exactly. We're, we're just kind of at the point where like, you know, let's let's let things settle as of right now. Okay. Uh, and then maybe after. After a year or two, we can reevaluate and uh, see how things are sitting. If we feel comfortable with expanding, we can obviously look into that. We know how to do that. Okay. Uh, um, but yeah, as of right now, that's so, kind of. So let me just play devil's advocate a little bit, right? So what I hear you saying is, hey, Michael, we're not going to buy anything for a year. Totally cool, right? Busy life, market's hot. What's going on? 
But also what I hear you saying is, hey, Michael, we're going to take an extra thousand bucks a month. And I'm just making that number up and we're going to put it on property A. So if property A's payment was 1100, now, honey, we're going to send 2K a month to that property is what I hear you saying. And, you know, we're going to pay an extra. Exactly. Rate. Okay. So, so the, the uh, snowball so, effect, right? With, yeah. The, with the Dave Ramsey. It's the Dave Ramsey model. <laughs> I mean, it, it is right. So what I hear you saying is that's what you're going to do. But then I hear you also saying in two years, we might be looking to get into a situation where we decide to grow again. This is what I hear you saying. And if, right. if that's the case, yeah. Uh, again, I, I do this all the time. So what I hear, that's what I hear you saying. But what I want to caution you against, if what you're doing is you're, you know, in essence, you're taking an extra 15 grand or 18 grand and you're, you're shoving it against a property, right? Which is great when you do it consciously. But what I also hear you saying is maybe in a year or so or two years or three years, we decide to grow again. It's hard to get that 18K out of that property because you have to do a refi and the rates might be higher, right? So what I might tell you to do, again, do whatever you want, but what I would advise someone to do is, you know what you might want to do, instead of sending that extra 900 to mortgage A, you might want to send the 900 to some other bank account, which is not connected to anything, which is far away, which you never look at. And mm -hmm. then you'd pile it up there. And then what you can always do is decide in two or three years, hey, honey, we really are done growing. The kids are older. It's hard managing twins with a, with a little brother or sister behind them. Um, then you can just take that money and put it all on one mortgage. Or if you decide to grow again, instead of having to do a refi in an environment where rates could be higher, you already have your down payment money. So yeah. you might want to think about that because if rates do go higher in four or five years and you decide to grow again, it's going to be tough to get that money out. And that's the problem yeah. with the Dave Ramsey model. I hear you. No, and that's actually, uh, thank you for sharing that because that's actually... Uh, another way of looking at it that we didn't even think about instead of paying down one of the mortgages, just setting that money aside and, yeah. and, and put it somewhere like totally out of, out of sight, right? Not your normal accounts. I would even open an account in a bank. You don't bank at. I mean, that would be how drastic I would get this. I see. And then kind of go with the approach of set and forget it. And then yeah, it's just, it's like not there. Right. Cause then you'll have 900 yeah. and then you'll have 18 and then 27 and then 36 and it just builds up over time. And pretty soon it's like, shoot, honey, we got a down payment. Or you know what, honey, let's pay off the house. I mean, you'll have the choice. And that's the power of doing it that way versus sticking it into a property. Then you get to a point, you're like, honey, the kids are in school now. Uh, we got more time. I'd love another unit, but we don't have any down payment. What can we do? Well, let's refi it. Well, darn it. We got, you know, we don't owe anything, but rates are, yeah, rates are 6%, not three. I mean, like, what's the highest rate you have on any of your debt today? Like thirty year debt, what's That's four and a half? Right now, yeah. uh, I think our highest interest rate is three point two five. Why the hell would you ever pay that off? I mean, seriously. Yeah, that's true. And that's the thing. That's the challenge uh, with real estate. There's so many different things you can do. Um, and and so that I'm pretty sure you like you said, you, you probably go through it uh, often. Oh, yeah, there's a of like, hey, you have this one idea and you go this route. And then after a while, you're like, oh man, this idea sounds great too. And, and I think that's where we're at right now is just paying off one or, or a few of them just sounds nice for the time being. And I think what's driving that is because of the amount of stuff that we have going on. Yeah. But I'm pretty sure like once things settle, uh, we're going to, you know, reconsider and, and start thinking, you know what? I think we're ready for another rental. Let's, yeah, let, let's go. Yeah, yeah we're, we're stuck yeah. in that situation. If we've been putting that money away to pay down one of the loans, then, you know, we kind of have to start that savings process from scratch at that point yeah. versus the other route, just having it available. Should we decide to go that route at a later time? So yeah, because again, later in time before, I mean, because really, again, life is funny, right? You'll go through cycles just like everyone else does. And, you know, it's really busy today and I totally get it. But, you know, in four or five years, they're going to be in school. It's still busy. Don't get me wrong. Yes. It's just different. And because uh, yeah. I think you're, you know, you're at eight doors today. My gut says, you know, if you got to 15 in the next five years, that's going to be your portfolio. I think eight is, it's close. You might be able to scrimp and scrape, scrape by to get there. But I think if you got to 15, because you're not going to need 20, this whole, you need 20 more doors is crazy. 
you get to you get to a total of 15 so roughly seven more doors and then you focus on paying mm-hmm. stuff off and repositioning debt it's going to be um far easier and you know my experience yeah no i like that um and that's definitely something i'm gonna be bringing that up with my wife <laughs> <laughs> hey this guy on youtube <laughs> this, this- <laughs> Oh, no, but we're always open with, with the amount of ideas that are out there. I mean, especially someone like you that's been doing this for a while, um, you know, it, it's it's valuable, you know. Cool. Just uh, kick it around. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. You know Thanks what I want to you know what I do, John, is I want to call this interview here because this is awesome. But I want to do a second one with you where we talk about out-of-state investing because I've never done it. And I just love to ask you some questions about it. Is you cool with that? Oh, absolutely. Oh, absolutely. Awesome, yeah, buddy. That. Well, thank you very much for your time. If people want to follow you or see what you're doing, you have a pretty cool Instagram page uh, with a great title. Mm-hmm. I love the name. Why don't you tell people what that is? Yeah. yeah so with Instagram, I'm at engineer dad seven. Feel free to follow me there. If, if you'd like to see what, what we've got going on. In yeah. Our engineer life. dad seven. I thought that was a great title. When I looked, I'm like, that's a great name. All right, buddy. Thank you very much. And stay tuned for episode number two.